boots to brothel creepers, from pumps to platforms, the place of the shoe in world culture has always been something more than just practical. Now estimates vary, but it's reckoned the average British woman has something like 35 or 40 pairs of shoes, which is quite a lot by anyone's standards. So what is the fascination with footwear? In particular, I see shoes as something that, are, that is, um, as a category of um, commodities, is something that belongs to the ordinary world, to the everyday experience, but at the same time also belongs to the exceptional experience, like designer shoes, something we profoundly desire. And it's also about movement, um, it's about freedom, um, it's, it has a very long history of connection with ideas, in particular ideas of freedom. The University of Warwick's Dr. Giorgio Riello has co-edited Shoes, a History from Sandals to Sneakers. But unlike other books on shoes, his isn't just a collection of pretty pictures. It's also um, a text that contains some uh, very um, useful information, first of all, so, and uh, it's also a kind of general analysis of um, footwear from the ancient world to the present, something that has not been done before. Um, the books that were there on the market were essentially very precise books on specific makers or specific types of, um, of shoes. Mine attempts a wider history of shoes, and this history is cultural, is economic, and is social. One of the aspects that you deal with in, in some detail is the the invention of the heel and, 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 and what it does and why we have heels on shoes. That goes back in time to um, the this, uh, beginning of the 16th century, between the 16th and the 17th century. Before that there isn't really what we call the, the heel. Um, you have shoes that are normally very low heeled, they have no heels at all, or they have very high platform and these are um, the so-called Pianelle, they are very common in Renaissance Europe and they are a derivation from Middle Eastern Nalines. You have the invention of the heel about 400 years ago as an innovation and that um, transformed the shape of the shoe first of all, it becomes much more similar to what we're wearing now, but also transforms um, the meaning of um, uh, of the heel itself. The heel becomes, for us, a heel is a sign of normally eroticism, it's, a, it's very associated to women and a kind of averse femininity. But uh, until the 19th century, the heel is mostly about social status. It's the idea of creating an elevated status because you are higher up, physically higher up, than most other people. So um, uh, Louis XIV, the King of France, has very high heels indeed for modern standards. His heels are red, um, so it is highlighted. You can see from the portrait how he dressed all in white with these heels that are red. So you immediately notice the heel and this very superior uh, status in society. Well, perhaps the opposite side of the coin to that is, is the rise in more recent years of what you might call comfort shoes, sneakers and trainers yeah. and so on, which would have been unthinkable 30, 40 years ago. How would you account for this phenomenon? Partially, you can say this is the inversion of, of that. It's, um, first of all, it's about uh, a more democratic um, society in which the same pair of trainers would be worn by very different people in terms of social backgrounds, education, income and so on. But it's also about the rediscussion of gender and gender identity. So you find out the sneakers or trainers are very similar for men and women, although they still differ in colours. We haven't been able to um, have similar colours for men and women. Still you find that um, uh, women's trainers must contain some form of pink that you would never find in men's trainers. In the history of shoes you can see, for instance, the um, importance of um, technology in the creation of uh, designers. We always think that designers produce beautiful shoes. In reality they produce also very innovative shoes. Um, one case is Ferragamo, the Italian uh, producer. In the early 20th century he patented several thousand um, different uh, innovations in shoes, including uh, reinforcement with steel for uh, very slender heels, or the famous invisible shoe that was made with a uh, fishing line, um, so it looked transparent when worn, and so on. So it's a kind of uh, playfulness with, with, um, with shoes and technology.